Hey everybody, this is Mike from The Art of Guitar, here to pay tribute to one of my all-time favorite guitar players. Ever since I was a kid, you know, I used to grow up watching Purple Rain on VHS like a million times, and uh, I couldn't help but be influenced by Prince, and after he passed about a year ago, I realized that the whole world felt the same way. You know, a lot of people were uh, talking about how much he affected their their life and their music, and I really just wanted in my small way to pay tribute to him through this video and show you guys some of my favorite Prince techniques. And uh, I was just gonna mention right off the bat, uh, I, I guess I'll call this, it's not really a technique, but it's very essential in playing Prince songs. You wanna have the right effects when you play. And he used quite a lot of effects, but the ones that really stand out to me as being the most important would be uh, these, would be the following. And uh, we're gonna start off with the octave pedal. Very important to do the beginning of When Doves Cry. And like I said with all my other videos, I'm not trying to teach you exactly the songs, but I just wanna show you the techniques. And in this case, also the effects and the sounds that are gonna go along with uh, playing some of his stuff. Okay, it sounds like this. It's that classic lick. Great way to open a song. It's just genius. Uh, you can use the octave pedal in many different ways, though. You could just solo in it, uh, and it just really fattens up your sound when you play because it's like another guitar playing underneath you an octave lower. Cool sound. You might hear a little Jack White in there. So that's the octave sound, very important. Uh, and then we have the wah pedal. There's that sound. I love how it opens up the sound when you do that, especially when you're playing funky clean chords. Later on, he does some soloing using the wah pedal, but my wah pedal is so old, it's got that crusty static in the middle that it's hard to do, but... Hear that? So I'm not gonna bother. Another effect you're gonna wanna have is a chorus pedal. And uh, basically, it gives a shimmering sound to your clean, and it really makes things sound sparkly, and it kind of sounds like a doubling sort of a sound of a guitar. But uh, here's what we have using some chords from Purple Rain. It'll sound familiar to you. great sound. If you don't use chorus, it just sounds a little more plain. It sounds like this. So it's not terrible. It just doesn't have that that fuller sound, if you will, that I really like. And once you engage that chorus pedal on stage, it just really fills the room in a different way. An effect you're going to hear me using a lot today is a delay. And the way Prince used delay was very epic. He would do his solos and he would engage the delay and it basically would let the notes live on a lot longer. So for example, if we just did part of uh, one of his most famous solos. Did you hear that tail at the end of it? That's the delay repeating what I just played, and I just have it set so it kind of gets a little crazy at the end, but it really helps. If you're playing bends, it brings out some more expression. I'm gonna go over a lot of that stuff later, but you get the idea how delay can really uh, make your solos a lot more epic. So I definitely recommend having a delay pedal, especially one where you can adjust it on the fly, or if you have a couple, multiple buttons on one, it's nice, because then you can have a short delay, like this. That's just a quick little delay that I like to use if I'm just doing maybe some picking of some kind. But if I kick into like a big lead, if I ever played the Star Spangled Banner at like a football game or something, I would definitely use delay. It would sound more like. That wasn't the Star Spangled Banner, but I don't know if there's a royalty you have to pay if you play it. So that was my own version of it. Prince was the master of the motif, and I use that word a lot. I never used to. Uh, started using it about a year ago. When I started thinking about what is it called when you just use a repetitive lick 
and do it over and over again for, you know, just to really drive the point home. And someone said, that's called a motif. So I went with it. Well, a motif, just a repeating pattern, uh, Prince was not afraid to use those and to really go after them. We're going to do a couple of versions of motifs, but um, this one is so circular that I wanted to show you because it's kind of a fun technique too. So if you were to go to the 14th fret on the E string, which is F sharp, and we're going to play the 16th fret as well, we're going to do a hammer on pull off technique. So we're going to go like this. We're gonna scoop underneath it and do the opposite. We're gonna go 16, 14, 16. So you get like a. Now the way he uses it, he just keeps repeating that so it becomes very circular. Now I think he picks every note, but I don't. He's probably better at picking than I am, but I'm gonna do it in my own version right now, but you can at least hear what the sound of it is, okay? so. It's Now that was just a quick example of something from one of his songs, but let's say you're playing in any kind of pentatonic scale. I'll just go back here to E minor. And I wanted to use that same idea. Well, you get a lot of mileage off of just a few notes if you pull this off. So pardon the pun, pull off, but you get this. Very cool circular lick. Now, anywhere you have four notes that are stacked like that, whether it's basically a rectangle shape or a square shape, you could do this move. So you could go like this even. So this is four notes, two stacked on top of each other. Uh, come up here. It's a great exercise too. It really gets your fingers moving and uh, you'll find new ways of utilizing it in different scales if you just perfect that first kind of initial idea of it. Using that same sort of idea of, you know, something that's pretty simple but can be very musical uh, is the idea of trills. And trills is basically where you take one note and maybe you hammer on the next note and pull off fast. You get a dual note sound like this. <laughs> And Prince was really good at using his trills. He would vary the speed on some of them, but in this particular case, in this solo that we're doing, uh, as you climb up, I'm going from the 9th fret to the 11th fret on the first string, and then the 11th fret to the 14th fret. So it's going from a whole step to a step and a half, and they sound different. The first one sounds like this. As you move up, then you come up here. And you can start the circular riff if you want, or the lick right there. So these all tie together, by the way. A lot of his techniques flow nicely into each other. One thing I learned to do early was to take anything I heard that I really liked that somebody did and figure it out and then utilize it in my own circumstance. So when I heard this in one of the solos, I thought, okay, first of all, I have to figure out how he did it. I'd figure out what intervals are involved and I have to figure out how to use it in different keys so that I could basically steal it. Uh, for my own use, uh, selfishly. But here's, I'll play it slow first of all. Here's how it sounds. When I heard that, I was like, that sounds awesome, especially with a phaser pedal. So I had to figure it out. So basically what I learned was that it was played over the E chord. So I thought, perfect, if I'm ever in a situation where there's uh, like the end of a song and someone hits an E chord, I'm throwing that in, I don't care. Uh, the next thing I had to do was figure out the intervals and how it was built. So right off the bat, I'm just gonna kind of show you the basic general idea. I don't wanna go too deep into it in this lesson, but uh, on the website, we do cover a lot of this stuff as far as intervals go. Uh, since it's over E, I realized that a big part of the sound is this. And all that is, it's a minor third to a major third and then to the root note. So at E, G is the minor third, G sharp is the major third, and then we hit the root note underneath it. This is a common blues thing. It's kind of like going. It's that idea. So we just do that in single note form here. And then if you know your intervals, here's what we're doing. We're walking down seventh, flat seven, he even comes down and hits the six. Check out how he does it in this case. So that's a chromatic walk, which means going down a half step each time. And then he comes back in this specific example, this is what he does. And then he hits, covers a few of those notes again. He starts the chromatic climbs down again. Here's the minor third to major third. 
climbing down again. And at the very end, he does minor third to major third, and he does not resolve it to the E. He just stops on the major third, because sometimes you don't want to be that predictable. Sometimes you just want to stop somewhere other than the root note. So now you could use this idea in any key. All you have to do is move it around to whatever key you're in. So like I said before, in that key that was E, so let's say it's in D, just transpose it down a whole step. And then you'll be able to match the intervals that way, and you could basically use it anytime you want after that. It's great. Now we already talked about motifs, but we should also talk about using a lick twice or more to really drive a point home. So in this particular case, he would play a lick and just double it. So it's kind of like just repeating it like an echo. And this is a very musical way to take a good idea and getting twice as much out of it. So I'll just do some of it. Great example of the echoing effect. Um, you notice a lot of those licks that I did, we did them twice or more. I think it was just twice at the most. Uh, a couple of them maybe were three or four times. And you get the uh, idea of how musical that can sound. It's a very simple idea, but not a lot of people do that. People seem to think they have to just keep playing notes and moving around and doing new things. But sometimes if you have a really good idea, it pays to do it twice or more. This is a technique that everybody has to do. I say that with confidence because I know how awesome it is and how useful it is whenever you're soloing. Anyone from the Beatles, you know? <laughs> to Jimi Hendrix, to John Frusciante, all those guys. Uh, when, you, when it comes down to it, we're gonna call it dyads, two note chords. It's basically just gonna be fragments of the chord and we're gonna be sliding it around to create a bigger sound. So in this case, uh, we're gonna play here at the ninth fret and we're gonna just play the first string and the second string, both at the ninth fret. That's gonna create an inverted fifth interval. Now we're talking about a lot of intervals that might be confusing to some of you guys, but like I said, we do teach it on the website so you can check it out or you could look it up on Google and stuff and look up intervals and start to learn about them. Uh, when I'm playing this, see how much sonic space that takes? That's only two notes. When you add distortion, it sounds great. So let's say I'm playing this chord. So in this case, it's C sharp major. If you notice the bar anyway is going across those two strings. So all we're doing is playing a fragment of that chord. Just like that. Sometimes what Prince will do, uh, Paul McCartney does this too quite a bit, he'll take that idea and just slide it up and bring it back. Hendrix too. So it's very musical, very valid when you're soloing to do this. But you might go, what else can I do with it? Well, you can go underneath and do that same stacked inverted fifth like this. Remember, the B strings tune differently, so in order to make this work, you have to change fingering. So now you're gonna be going like this. It's more of a staggered type of thing. Yes, you could just keep the bar and move down, but I wanna stay in this position to show you that you can outline the chord shape. Isn't that a great sound? Now you can't get away with learning Prince techniques without learning some funk strumming. And we're just gonna use this example. It's a very obvious glaring example. And it sounds so cool. We're just gonna use some uh, clean sound with a little bit of compression so that we really get a smooth sound. But we're still gonna be able to cut through using our funk strumming. And if you've ever done this before, you'll know it requires a lot of left hand muting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically play C on the second string, so it's the 13th fret, and then we're gonna play G on the first string. 15th fret, hear that compression kicking in? By the way, that's another effect you might wanna get, a compressor. All right, so if I play those two together, sounds like that. If I drop the G back a half step, we get that, more of a funky sound. Now that's cool, but if you start to mute the strings around it, which I'll show you in a little bit, and start doing funk strumming, check this out. Now that's not exactly how the song goes, but like I said, I don't really care about teaching the song today, but the technique is what's important. Okay, so once we uh, establish the idea of the first two notes being played, I want you to touch the third string just a tiny bit with the first finger, just to kill it. So now it should sound like this. 
And then with your thumb, you could bring it over the top to kill a lot of the other strings. So you're basically killing all the strings you don't want to make noise, creating this like dead sound. And then the notes you want to come through will still be alive. So that's kind of an art to be able to do that. All right, so I'm gonna reach over, test it, play all the other strings if they're dead, good. And then the two you want should be alive. Drop down that high note and you get that. A great way to practice your strumming, strumming, by the way, is just to put your whole hand over the string and barely touch it so that they're all dead and just go like this. That's good practice anyway. Once you start to get a groove going, go back to the position we had and start to make it work. When it comes to intensifying your lead playing, sometimes you have to just go crazy. And I love doing this. Uh, we'll take Purple Rain for a few examples here. And once I do a bend, there's gonna be a three note fast picking part, basically tremolo picking. And you're gonna ascend from the 15th fret to the 17th fret to the 18th fret. And once you do the bend, you'll understand the context of it. But I'm gonna start with slow picking, doing the climb. And then I'm just gonna sort of go crazy and let tremolo picking happen. And I'm not gonna worry so much about accuracy, okay? It's more about the intensity. So check this out. So it's kind of in context of the song. When you start the picking, it's real deliberate. Now, do you hear the delay? That's on purpose. It basically creates more chaos. And then when you pick really fast, it's just a big blur of notes until you come out of it with a bend. So let's say you're going. That's more like the song uh, when you're doing that. Now you might notice when I tremolo pick, I'm using my whole hand. That's on purpose. You could do the Eddie Van Halen, you know, rotation that I like to do sometimes. That's fine. But I found that's more for uh, clean speed picking. When you want to make it more messy and sonically dirty, which I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's when I start to use my whole hand because my palm rubs against the strings. Creates more, more dirt. And the best players that I know, they don't really care so much about being clean all the time. Sometimes it's more about the effect that you're getting out of it, the intensity. And in this case, feel free to rub down those strings as you're picking really fast. I can only call the next bend the Purple Rain Bend because the whole song builds up and then all of a sudden everything stops and this bend happens and it takes up so much space. I'm like, what is he doing? It was funny when I learned it because I found out that it's what I used to call the country bend. So before I really play it with all these effects and everything, I'm just gonna play what I used to know it as. Especially on a Telecaster, uh, you get that country sound. Of course, my ears have been conditioned to country over the years. I've played in a lot of country bands, but uh, some of you guys might be going, oh, yuck, country. But when you add it to the context of the song and you had distortion and delay and the song builds this part and you hit this bend. It takes on a very emotional characteristic. Just the way those, uh, the notes rub together because you're bending one, you're keeping one where it is and the sound is just going insane. So the simplest thing can be the most effective. Prince is so good at doing that. You might ask, well, that's great for Prince, but what if I want to use that bend? Well, you can. I'll just give you a situation where you could use it, okay? Let's say you're in G major and you're playing G major pentatonic here. We'll start at the sixth string, 15th fret. So G, the next string, 12, A, 14. I'll just say numbers to speed it up. 12, 14, 12, 14. 12, 15, 12, 15. So that's your G major pentatonic scale. Now, if you go to the middle of it, you'll see that the 14 and the 15 here, so the A and the D line up just like the, just for the technique to work. So we could do that right here in the middle. So what you do is you play the 14th fret, you bend it, and you can hit the 15th fret on the second string shortly after or at the same time. So here's shortly after. Here's at the same time. So like I said, if you're in G major. Okay. 
that's one context where you could use that idea. Prince's vibrato is extreme sometimes, and everybody has their own vibrato, so I don't want you to copy his vibrato or my vibrato, whoever. Uh, I know I already copy BB King when I do my vibrato sometimes. I just like the way my hand looks when it does that. But I watch Prince do his vibrato. It's very smooth, but it can be very extreme at the same time. So for example, if you just want to try to get the idea of it, start maybe at the 14th fret, third string, and line up your fingers behind it. And I want you just to give me just a small vibrato. So shake the string up and down. Yeah, that's fine. Now, try to push it up even further and make the vibrato wider and wider. Remember, you don't want to pull it down and push it up and pull it down. Keep the center line, but bring it up, bring it back home, bring it up, bring it back home, and try to get more and more out of it. Now, we might not have to go that crazy, but you'll see in future uh, examples that I'm going to do today that he does sometimes get that crazy with his bends, and it really uh, brings out some awesome sounds. So get ready for those. All right, for this next example, you'll realize that all the warm-up exercises you do were not for nothing. Uh, it's basically a cool circular lick that he turned into a rep repetitive motif that he uses throughout one of the songs, at least part of it. And check it out, it's very chromatic. There's a lot of just one, two, three fingerings going on, and it's repeated enough to where it gets really catchy over time. <laughs> So does that look like a warm-up exercise? You know, whenever we do the spider exercise like we do on the site, we're doing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this is a very uh, exercise-based pattern, but I wonder if Prince used it as like an exercise and then he just like, oh, I could use that in a song. That sounds great. So one more time, remember I'm not here to teach you the riff, but I'm just gonna play it and show you that actually very uh, technical sounding licks can, can be very musical as well. If you've tried to compose on the guitar a lot, eventually you figure out that, you know, because you know your shapes and your scales all over the guitar, that you go back to the same, you know, handful of tricks a lot. And you might lose uh, the ability to be very creative because you might feel like you just keep doing the same stuff over and over again. I believe the next lick, I'm not going to play it exactly like I said, but it's going to be pretty close, that Prince does in this song. I believe he probably composed it on a keyboard, or at least it sounds that way to me. I've done that before where I felt like, you know, I'm in these my, my usual trappings on the guitar that I'm used to, and I wanted to try something new, so I composed a lead line on a keyboard one time, and then moved that back to the guitar and realized that, wow, this is some crazy stuff I would have never thought of um, if I just started on the guitar to write it. So here's the sound of it. <laughs> Hear that? Just that alone, I don't think I would have thought of that on a guitar. But to me it sounds very much like something I would do on a keyboard if it was like a synth sound. Move it up. Check this out. When I was doing some research for this video, I didn't have to do it very much, by the way, just because growing up, uh, I listened to Prince so much that it's on, it's in my DNA, I believe. But uh, I came upon that tribute to George Harrison where Prince played that epic solo. And I wanted to show you some techniques that he did in that because uh, some of these he maybe wouldn't use in his normal songs, but because this was a special occasion, he was pulling, up, uh, pulling them off. So he does this crying bend. And uh, it's interesting because what you do is you bend the note and you you give it vibrato, but then you slowly release it as you go and it creates this real whining, weeping, if you will, sound. Check it out. So the difference is if you just bent it and brought it down, that's one sound, that sounds great. If you brought it up and just did vibrato, but kept it up, it sounds like this. Yeah. 
That's pretty epic too, but it lacks that weeping sound. So the trick is to do the vibrato and then release the bend as it's vibratoing. It can be very tricky. I'll admit, on this maple neck, my fingers feel like they're sticking a little bit. That's why I prefer rosewood, but I had to play the uh, Telecaster for Prince. So I got this. Really shake it. You can get some really great sounds out of it. You're bending, shaking it, and dropping it simultaneously. Three things at once. I don't know where that came from. That was cool. He was moving around the neck so much, and he used what I call the elevator trick. In this case, it's A minor, but he went on the E string, and he basically played the notes of the A minor scale, which are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, easiest scale to remember. Um, and he did it in a really cool way. So he would just play a note in the A minor scale, pull off to the open string. And it's really showy because your hand's basically flying around as you do it. It's kind of like if you played Wasted Years by Iron Maiden, it's that same concept. So you could just do pull offs. Or you could just pick a few times between the pull offs. And it allows you to go from one position to the next in a very cool fashion. So let's put a few things together now. Now I told you earlier that we'd be doing more vibrato and this is a case where you really have to do it, okay? So we're gonna move to the second string, 20th fret, so it's an A minor shape box here. And I'm basically gonna be bending that note up slowly and when I get to the top, I'm gonna pick it again and then shake it with vibrato. <laughs> My fingers are killing after doing these Prince licks. Wow. So what you do is you bend the notes slowly and when you get to the top, we're gonna hit it one more time and really shake it. Okay, and finally, at the very, uh, towards the end of his solo, he started doing this octave slide. And I thought it was just octaves, I thought it was. But I noticed he was doing the thumb over trick, kind of like you do when you do the Hendrix chords. Which we're gonna do soon. I'm gonna do a Hendrix video very soon. Okay, so when I play now, instead of doing octaves like this, which you guys might be used to, like in this case, we're gonna play the sixth string, fifth fret. Uh, we're gonna go to the fourth string, seventh fret. And then you just basically slide up and down. That's cool, but I noticed he brought his thumb over the top, so that made me wonder, why would he do that if he could just do that? And then I realized his first finger was trailing behind on the second string, in this case the fifth fret, and it created a fifth interval up high. So it sounds even cooler. Check this out. See how it adds that extra element that's actually pretty cool? So if I'm moving it around, watch what happens. Gives it uh, a darker quality, I guess you could say, and uh, actually adds really cool uh, harmonic sound over the top. So if you could, go ahead and just reach back there with your index finger and let it trail along and add that fifth interval. So without it, you just get the octaves. With it. It's a little more bold sounding, and I really think that was cool. So I believe that's what he was doing. Uh, if not, it was at least doing the oct. He was at least doing the octaves, which is cool enough. But uh, adding that fifth just gives it a whole other element. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was an honor to show you these Prince techniques, and I hope you can utilize them in your own playing. I know it's helped make me a better player, and even just studying them right now for this video, I feel like I learned a lot, and uh, I also got real sore fingers from doing this, but it was worth it. And I hope you guys think so too. Uh, remember to subscribe to the channel and we'll be bringing you a lot more artists in the future, but I uh, appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you soon.